YouTube. My name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well this video is about heating bearings and I have the diff out of my golden grey Massey Ferguson 35. It's a 1957 and we're running through a restoration with it and we come to the diff bearings. Now those who followed Bundy Bear's Shed um, have seen in the past when I've put axle bearings on I've used us to heat the bearings to put them on so you're not pressing or you're not heating all the time um, I've used a deep fryer and it's a kitchen bench top deep fryer and we just put the bearings in heat the oil up and the bearings and the oil come to the heat together and usually once the red light comes on on the deep cooker um, I would take the bearing out I'd let it cycle a couple of times and take the bearing out but I never actually knew what temperature I was doing them at and years ago, uh, many years ago, I used to do them in a um, yeah, John Deere axle bearings and things like that, we used to do them in a frying pan or a fry pan, electric fry pan and you'd have so much oil in it and you'd put the bearing in the middle of where you could see the heat ring was and you'd heat them up and we would take them till we'd turn it up flat out and we'd take that until um, until the light on the thermostat on the handle clicked in and out a couple of times and we knew we were we were pretty close to temperature but one day in my business I had a bearing in there and I got called away to the phone into the counter and I forgot about the bearing and, and by the time I got back to it it was buggered it was blue so there's a chance of actually wrecking your bearings by doing that but you have to be onto it so um, and always the lid was never on the fry pan. Every time you went to use it, you had to find new oil to put in, new transmission oil and things like that. So, so we went along to the chip cooker, the deep fryer. And um, the deep fryer, it, um, I did test yesterday on the deep fryer um, with an axle bearing. And an axle, our deep fryer, it's a Sunbeam brand, and... Um, our deep fryer will heat a bearing to 140 degrees Celsius and um, 140 degrees C the bearing will just drop over no troubles at all and as it cools it'll be a, a really good shrink fit onto the shaft and, and it's a good fit and you're not stressing your bearing or anything like that so so what brings me to this this episode or this this um, um, part of heating bearings up is the wife and I went to a show. This is a new wave induction cooker. Um, yeah, precision induction cooktop. It's got three settings 900, 1500, and 2000 watt. And I'm looking at heating bearings and that up on YouTube. Yeah, you know, there's things from SKF and all that. So we actually had a rep from SKF come to the shop quite a few years ago now with an induction heater for a bearing and, and we had a look and we had a job to do so we took it out of the back, we heated our bearing, worked like a beauty but it was six grand and at six thousand bucks at the time um, I, I don't know how big or little it was, I, I just can't remember any of that, I remember the six grand and um, look we, we didn't think we'd need one enough to purchase that at six thousand dollars so um, so with this induction heater um, I'm going to try putting this crown wheel carrier bearing on there and seeing if I can get it up to 120 degrees now this brings us up to this chart that I've got off of Timken and the Timken website has this chart where are we there we are and the chart reads cone bore growth expansion rates due to thermal changes so that tells you how much the center of that will grow at a certain at a certain temperature now look we're closer to three than two so we'll go with three inch because it goes two inch three inch so at 65 degrees c or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the bearing, the core diameter of that will increase 1.4 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.036 of a millimetre. At 90 degrees, it goes to 
2.3 thou or 0 0.058 of a millimetre and at 120 degrees C which is 250 degrees Fahrenheit it will grow 3.2 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.081 of a millimetre and on reading the guidelines with the um, from Timken, it was suggesting that 120 degrees C was really all they wanted you to take their bearings to because over 120 degrees C there was a chance that um, um, the metallurgy would change within the bearing and, and you might get, well things might change that you may be unaware of that will limit the life of your bearing. So, so what we're going to do today, just as a little test run, is I tried this in the kitchen. The missus bought two of these. She bought a little one and a big one. And this one, she said, when I'm finished with it, put it in the caravan. We'll take it camping for powered sites. And finished, I oh, might never be finished. But <laughs> might never be finished buggering around with bearings in the shed. So the other night, I put it down on the induction cooker in the kitchen. There was another bearing I had to, just to try it. I cleaned it all up and took it into mum's kitchen. And I set the temperature control here to 60 degrees because at 60 degrees, 60 degrees is hot to the touch. And when I put it this way at 60 degrees, the needle bearings on the outside here got to where I couldn't touch them and I could still hold my hand on the centerpiece. I don't know why, I don't understand the induction heating part so much. But I tried turning it over like this and when I turned it over like that, it seemed to heat evenly. So. This morning I'm going to go and get our temperature gun, our, our little bang good gun, and we're going to heat this bearing up and see if we can heat it up enough just to drop it over there with a home or a bench top little induction heater for cooking. Okay, I've got my ugly dial out of the picture and with our thermal thermometer here, the crown wheel carrier is sitting at 18.6, 18.6 degrees C. The bearing sitting on the cooker, look at the focal depth the same, is sitting at 22.8 degrees. Now with an induction heater, um, the thing on top of it can get hot. You have to use an iron cooktop and go from there. So what I'm going to do is We'll hit start. Whoa. I've got that set at 60 degrees C. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. You may have to take my word for it. And that's, oh shit, that's starting to heat up. Yet you can feel the outside edge here isn't. So let's just see what's happening with those rollers. We'll get our focal point correct. I think you can see that in the viewfinder. It's hard for me to tell. And we'll go and check the, check the inner cone. Yeah, see the inner there is 29, 30. And the roller on the outside here is 40. So by putting the bearing that way, we're at the 32 now, so by putting the bearing that way, for some reason, it heats the outer first. So it actually senses, it senses when there's nothing on and it tells that we have an error. Have an error in our ways. My mother used to tell me that. Okay, so we'll put that back up the other way now. At 60. We're going to heat it to 120, but I'm just going steady so we don't bugger the bearing completely. So now we have 50 on the roller. Now 
Yeah, it's taking a little bit more to get the get the centre bar. It's a 36, 37. So that's coming up, but still the outer is at 58 now. So we'll just give that a couple of seconds just to um, to heat up or equalise, and we'll see if it equalises nicely throughout the whole process. It's it's this inner that we're concerned about that we want to expand enough to drop onto our diff here, but. If it's going to get so hot that we wreck the needle rollers around the outside in getting to that temperature, what's the point? It just won't work. So, so it's slowly heating up. We're up to 44, 45 inside, and the, the cage is 72 and the needle is 69 so it may take a little while for it to equalize um, you can't really see the 60 degrees but it's got 60 C and we can up and down here by 5 degree increments there you can see it there 60 C We've got a bit of smoke coming off the bearing now, and this plate is still cool as a cucumber. But we have a little bit of vapour coming off the bearing. So we must be getting warm. At the focal point, we're sitting at 53, 54.8, 55 on the centre ring. 83 on the on the cage, 84, 83, 84 on the roller. So we'll see when it stops at 60 degrees C and yeah, just see. If this doesn't work, back to the old chip cooker. <laughs> we know it works. Too. Oh shit. Okay, so when you bring the temperature there, it says low medium at 60 degrees C. When it's up higher, up around 200, it goes up the other way. So let's have another look and see how our temperature's going. Well, at 120, we're sitting at Oh, sorry, I mean it's 60 degrees C on the dial. That's steadily climbing still. Oh, no, it looks like a cycle. It's dropping back to 62. That's sitting on 100, and the roller's on 98. That's climbing once more. Now it's dropping back. Now it's dropping back down. So it must be at 60 degrees on the dial, it's cycling at a little bit over 70. So let's go 90 degrees C and just see what happens. When that inner cone gets to 120, I'm dropping it on here and just seeing how we go with it. Got to 80. About 113 outside. 111 on the roll is at 90.
wipe up my mouldy grips. And if that gets to 120 inside there, we're going to try and dump it on. Now there is a chance that with this induction heater we could make a little loop and sit a bearing on just to heat the inner. And maybe worth a try. So the inner's at 90. We're at 117 on the outer. And the inner seems to cycle quite a bit. I'm going to just turn this over just to see the difference. See if when the temperature gets up a bit, the things change. Oh, look at that, we're straight away to 102. Needles are 121, the cage is 128. Okay, we're pretty close. We're sitting on about 114. So let's grab this bearing and see if we can drop it on. Look at that. Beautiful. So that bearing's sitting on, so I think we've proved the theory. Um, your home, your home style cooker, you can still put your, oh no you can't. Yeah, it's hot in the middle there. Just in the centre where the pot was. Well, there you go. I think we've proved the concept. The, um, the bearing is shrunk on to the crown wheel carrier with no ill effects at all to the bearing. Um, the outside got to about 121, 22, I think, from memory. I'd have to have a look at the footage again. The inside had expanded enough that we could just drop it on. And I don't know if the brand matters at all, but this was a new wave Live, oh, live well for next, live well for less. Be good when I learn to read. These videos will get a hell of a lot better. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's proof of theory. Um, that way we do have a, an exact control over the temperature of a bearing, so we're not over, over stressing it. Um, the deep fryer one that we use for axle bearings, nothing wrong with that. Um, look, that's worked for ages. But um, I do have a couple of axles on Goldie coming up to use. And so I'm going to try this on the axles. The, the same thing, the bearings are a very similar size. They're, they're a different number, but they're very similar in size. So um, I think if we pop it up to about 80 and, and keep track of the temperature, we can do it. So there you go. Don't go buying the expensive one. Um, I noticed that we have Harvey Norman here in Australia and um, good guys and that. And the, there was. That was on 2000 watt, um, which probably just affects the time it takes to do the job. Um, I saw these, not this brand, um, Sunbeams and, and other brands like that, for 69 Aussie dollars, um, right up to you know, $180 sort of thing. So um, this, this new wave, well, we went to a handy um, field day and they sold us two of them plus some goodies. You know, you go to the shows and they give you a pack and a box and all this other stuff. And um, I think it was about $295 and that gave us this big one that's supposed to go in the caravan when I finished my tractor. <laughs> um, and there's a little one that Jude has on the bench all the time and she uses it all the time. Like we've got a beautiful, 
cooktop, you know, glass top, cooktop and all up there. And she says, oh, no, she likes that little thing. You can, you know, you can just drop it down a few degrees or whatever. So, so induction uh, bench top, induction heater or cooker for heating a bearing works a treat. Do yourself a favour. Go and get yourself one and give it a go. If you have some bearings to do, um, I've been looking forward to doing this video for ages and I'm, I'm glad that it worked. Um, we have a nice clean bearing there now, not, um, not collecting dust with oil and shit all over it and um, not making a mess. So, that'll do for this video. Thanks for watching and um, yeah, we'll catch up next time, mate. Eh?